All right, so I've got them all three on the wall. Now it's gonna be a matter of just connecting them, getting them all wired up, and then we will be in business again. This is a great time for me to point out, do not do any of this just because I said it. Always consult the manual and your local laws and ordinances and governing authorities and all that stuff. And I do not take any responsibility for you or what you do, your actions are your own. Consult the manual. This is also a great time for me to point out that the manual uh, has been updated since it shipped. So go to the website and download the manual because it's a little bit different. So I've added these one inch ENT connectors here. I think that's what they're called. I don't know. Um, they'll snap into this. This guy will just snap right up in there. Once again, I am not an expert. Do not follow me for legal and um, technical know-how. This is just the way I'm doing it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this back, um, cut back the shielding, and then I'm going to connect it all up. Then I'm gonna take this one. I guess I've gotta cut some of some of this back off, and then I need to go ahead and, and uh, put this bend in here and get, get it all connected up, and we will be good to go. Also, on this one, I am gonna put ferrules on, on the ends of these wires. I thought that it was kind of a gimmicky thing, but actually the instruction manual for this unit says that if you're using these fine, finely strand wires that you need to have ferrules on it. So I've actually purchased a ferrule kit here that I'm going to be trying out. Um, this was kind of the nicest one that I could find at a decent price, it was about 50 bucks. I figured I use uh, these finely strand wires quite frequently, so I wanted to get one in all different sizes. I wanted to have something that had a nice kit so that I wasn't constantly losing things and I wasn't gonna be running out anytime soon. And this just seemed like a really nice tool. So that's what I've got. Of course, I'll put a link in the description. Feel free to buy it if you want. Otherwise, get your own wherever you want. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and put ferrules on these guys. I don't believe I need to on these because they're not finely strand wires. Um, and you can see they help hold up an awful lot better. So um, we will put it all together and see how this works. All right, so I've made my mark where I want it. Now, a, a tip right here on cutting off this shielding is if you take it and you just bend it pretty good like this and then slowly start to cut, it will reveal, it'll actually start to like splice open like that. Hopefully you can see that. Zoom in a little bit. There we go. And so you can do that without actually cutting into the wire itself. So I'm going to come back over here and slowly start cutting this. You can see it just kind of peels open. So that definitely helps keep from, like, I don't know, the <laughs> I always get a little anxious when I'm cutting into this stuff. So you can actually just like pop it open. I get a little anxious because if you cut too far, then all of a sudden you've you've ruined it and now you've got to replace a very expensive wire or put some tape on it or whatever. See, now that just kind of pops right open. See that? Perfect. So the white, the neutral, is going to go over here on the left and the ground, the green, is going to go on the right. Um, I want to make sure that I have a, a decent amount. And there's a lot of room back in here, so I'm going to cut this back about right here. There's no reason to make it so short. I can't can't do anything with it. About right there. Well, let's try out this fancy new tool here. All right, I got it on there. It's it's kind of snug and hard to get on. So I did apply a little bit of heat just so this plastic would be a little more moldable. There we go. That's, uh, that's actually kind of nice. So according to the manual right here, we're going to torque these guys down to 18 inch pounds or two Newton meters. On this guy, you, you push down and then you spin. Right now you can see the zero 
see right here, the zero is on 10. So in order to get to, in order to get to 18, we're going to push down on this collar and we're gonna spin till we, the eight is on the line and that's 18. You hear that click? So I'm gonna loosen up again and then go one more time. All right, it's 18 inch pounds. There it is. Properly torqued, and we're good to go. Got a link in the description. Now, I know, and the manual says very plainly, and this is just the way that electrical systems work in America, that L1 is black and L2 is red. But in my system, I started it off backward. I'm going to roll with it because that's how I already have it set up in my system. I've got these guys connected, got my grounds connected here, neutrals, then my L1s and L2s. We're all good to go. We're all torqued down appropriately. This guy's snapped in. That's nice. Uh, now what I'm going to do is focus on getting the battery cables connected. And to do that, as I mentioned uh, previously, I need to remove this guy because I don't need it anymore because I've got one right up here. So I need to take this guy off, take off the cover, and then we're going to splice this cable back together. I don't believe I have, gosh, it'd probably be, be cheaper <laughs> just to put a lug on the end of this one and connect it up, but I don't know that I think that's going to shorten my cables too much. And I've already got these splices. So if I end up coming back at a later point and um, taking the splice out and putting a new lug on it, we'll, we'll go that route. But for now, we'll just remove this, splice it, and connect it up. I don't have enough uh, of this line to get up here. So I need to splice these guys back together. It's definitely massively overkill. These are expensive, but I've got them right now and I don't have another lug and I don't have a longer wire. So that's what we're gonna do. Just take an Allen key. Slide this guy in here after I straighten it up just a little bit. You can see this is actually gonna work out all right. I'll probably put something in here tape it up a little bit so this doesn't fill up with debris and dust and junk as it falls into it, but it's snugged down really nice. Um, then I've already got this up here. Now this is supposed to be torqued down, by the way, this is a, a 10 millimeter socket here, and it's supposed to be torqued down to four to five Newton meters. I'm gonna go ahead and say 40 inch pounds. So that's it right there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and connect my negative. And I thought about actually popping out this hole right here and going straight up through it, which I might still do. I don't know, let's let's see if we can go through here. Also wanna be real careful not to cross those two as I'm doing it. And by cross it, I mean touch the positive terminal with the negative. go. So the only other thing that I need to do at this point is connect the PV, which I have got up here running in. Um, I don't really have my solar panel set up at this point anyway, so there's not, I'm not going to do this yet. I'm going to go ahead and um, move on to one of the other inverters and we'll go from there. We'll come back and do the PV at some other point. Let's move on to the next one. I must say this nicer more expensive copper wire is so much easier to work with than this uh, larger aluminum. It just, man, it's night and day. Just its flexibility, the ability to just get it where you want it quickly. It took me about 10 minutes to get the other guys in place, get them snug down, and then I'll come back and torque them. Pull on them, make sure everything's snug. We're good to go. 
I'm coming to you now from the future and we're gonna go back in time. But unfortunately I forgot to film this part. So everything is running great, but forget about that right now. We need to connect the communication cables and make sure everything is set on the inverters. So let's take a look at that right now. This is how you set up the parallel. We have to set the dip switches on each of these inverters and it's gonna go like this on a three inverter setup. The first inverter on the left, the dip switches are going to be both in the up position, both are on. Then inverter number two, both dip switches are down. Then on the final inverter, both dip switches are in the up position. So we're gonna go two up, two down, and two up. The inverters are ramping up, so I apologize for the noise. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the communications cables. Forget about the orange cable, that's going to the batteries. We've got our left and our right gray cables. That's all we're looking at. Left and right gray cables. Left and right gray cables. Left and right gray cables. So, how do we set this up? The right cable here is going to go into the left cable here. The right cable here is going to go into the left cable here. Then you're going to take the right cable and you're going to go all the way back to the left. All right, I'm going to put it on screen so that it will be a little easier to understand. So check out this diagram. If it doesn't make sense, consult your manual, which you need to do anyway. I've also got two of my PV lines in at this point. So this is a great time to talk about the PV. Go, it is still a great idea to have these isolators on the wall. That way you can turn it off here. I also like to go ahead and have connections um, right here so I can disconnect. And then following it up into each inverter, it goes right into the PV1. Now, you might ask, why do I have an isolator here if I've also got one right there? Well, while I'm making these connections, I want to make sure that I don't have anything live on that. I could just unplug them. That's, that's true. I could unplug them right here. But it's nice being able to turn it off here, knowing that that's off, and then also knowing that that's off. The next thing you're going to want to do is connect your orange cable from your master inverter, and that is going to go down to your batteries. All right here, Life Power 4 batteries is gonna to go to the left port, and then you're gonna daisy chain as you would from right to left, to right to left, right to left, right to left, all the way down. Be sure before you turn them all on, follow the commissioning procedures in the manual. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you set the settings into parallel for the specific inverters and all that stuff. Be sure to follow the manual for that. I didn't record it, I'm sorry. Uh, also, EG4 uh, or Signature Solar, one of the two has a great video about that, and I'm gonna put that right up over here. It is crazy simple, y'all. I mean, it, anybody can do it. Very DIY, user-friendly, especially since these new 6000 XPs have all the switch gear built in, and you can kind of get rid of, you know, you don't have to do this stuff right here and all the other things, but Guys, it's, it's simple. And I can say definitively that this is a massive upgrade from the 6000 EX's, EXs that I had been running. So I'm pretty excited about it. And I can also tell you that once I worked out a couple bugs that we'll talk about in a later video, these inverters have been flawless, like no problems. So pay attention to, to the videos as they're coming out. Uh, we've got a couple more coming up that uh, that are gonna be good. You're gonna like them. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the things that I love, the things that I hate about them, because even though they've been working flawlessly, there are some things that I can't stand. And we're gonna talk about that as well. Be sure to like and subscribe, and uh, comment down below if there's any questions, or things that I you feel like I left out, or things I did wrong. Love to hear all that too. And we'll talk to you on the next one.